We're at the Jindal Stainless Tower in Gurgaon and we have here with us the Senior Vice President of Tunneling Association of India, Lieutenant General Suresh Sharma. General Suresh Sharma is the former Director General of Border Roads Organization and the Engineer-in-Chief of the Indian Army. He has been an instrumental figure in various government infra projects. He comes with a diverse experience of around four decades and he has worked both with the government and the corporate sector. Thank you for taking out time for this, sir. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, I was born in a place called Jammu and that's the place where I had my initial school education. Okay, for the college education, uh, one had to go out of the city and I studied my engineering from Kanpur University and it was somewhere in the last year of my, my professional degree that we were selected for uh, the Indian Army. And uh, that's how I, I joined the Army. And yes, it's been almost about four decades uh, that uh, one has had in the Army and out of the Army. Uh, it's been a good journey that uh, as far as my Army career is concerned, I think I've been very fortunate uh, that uh, I've had an exposure to varied kind of jobs, positions, uh, terrains, the people, teams to work with. And uh, at the end of the day, I realized that it's been a fantastic journey. Out of the 40 years or 38 odd years, first 20 years were totally into the combat. I belonged to the Army engineers, but I had very little to do with the engineering part. It was mostly the combat assignments. It's only in the second half of my career that I landed up uh, into the assignments which had more and more to do with the works. And my first appointment was as the chief engineer and not with the Indian Army, but with the Indian Navy in Mumbai. So it was quite a change. And in a nutshell, if I was to say that I was so fortunate that my, I never had to repeat an appointment. Every single rotational appointment came up. It was 180 degrees different from what I was doing in my previous assignment. So it gave me more exposure and a little more uh, wider perspective of the things. And uh, it culminated. I was very fortunate that I could have two organizations, two premier organizations of the Indian Armed Forces. One is the Border Roads Organization, which I'm very proud of. And second was, I was the head of the Army Corps of Engineers, including the military engineering services. And that's how my association, a larger association with the works uh, developed. When you talk of infrastructure, especially the large infrastructure, the two basic elements are concrete and steel. There is no infrastructure which can be built about without the steel. Now steel, we all understand, steel is of different kinds, of different varieties. Why stainless? Because uh, more often than not, the infrastructure, especially which is in a corrosion related environment, Okay, whether it is seaside or corrosive environment, including in the deserts today, or even, even I would say that, okay, where you want slightly stability of the structure, okay, so that's the kind of, or you want more architectural features to be brought in, that's where I find that the utility of the stainless steel is increasing, is exponentially increasing now. And I see that the future, uh, I think more and more designers, more and more end users are going to ask for the stainless steel as the primary uh, reinforcement. All of us know it that uh, corrosion is number one enemy of any structure. We are seeing more and more structures done 10, 15, 20 years back where the life expectancy may have been 40, 50 years are now going bad. Okay, primarily because the steel has got corroded. So that's why the government has taken the right decision. But at this point of time, these are guidelines. To make it mandatory, well, will probably will take time, but I think even guidelines are good enough. And these are the issues which probably need to be brought up through, through uh, different kind of, say, organizations, through different kind of interactions and through different kind of forums that we need to increase this usage. You cannot legislate it, but I think more and more people must stick to it because this is the future. Except for in, 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 in very, very strategic areas, the military infrastructure is becoming a dual usage. So the infrastructure is 
which you made primarily for the military can also be used by the civilians living in that area, be it the roads, be it the airports, and it's happening now. It's opening up. So one such road that I, it comes to my mind was the DSDBO road in Leh. Uh, it was a road which was under construction for a very long time. Some of it got washed away because of some poor alignment. So this road had to be laid out again and it involved even a bridge over Shiok River, which is a meandering river, which during the summer season rather, uh, really, really widens up a lot. So this was one challenging project, which I started. I, didn't, I couldn't finish it in my, my given time, that, but I, I started it and it, is, it got finished on time. And it's today really helping the Indian Army for its movement in those areas. So this is one, one project which I feel very satisfied. It's very, very satisfying uh, to go back and see those projects now, how they have benefited not only the, the military users, but also the community as such. I think our countrymen must, must know and learn and visit more and more of Northeast. It's fascinating, people are fantastic. And as far as the infrastructure is concerned, I think there is a tremendous amount of you know, uh, scope. Very interesting project is the Trans Frontier Highway. It was a concept, okay, which was being pushed by some people, uh, well, not very enthusiastically taken by some people, but then there was a huge debate. I was part of the debate that should we do it, should we not do it? But I was so happy about five, five months, six months back, when the government has announced uh, CCS, Cabinet Committee on Security has given its approval. It's more than 1,500 kilometers of trans-frontier highway, which will some, start somewhere uh, in, in the line to Tawang and finish in a, in a place called Vijaynagar, traversing over seven valleys, 1,500 plus kilometers. This will give you a glimpse into the entire Northeast, at least major part of Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. It's fantastic. Northeast is to be seen, to be believed. I think we need to uh, make more efforts. Uh, government has done fantastic amount of investment now, and uh, you know has sanctioned a lot of a lot of projects there. But people who are associated with the whether you are a builder or a, or a supplier, more and more people I recommend people must go see, visit, and support those programs. I feel very happy to work with the younger generations. Okay, the response that you get from, from the younger lot of people, including the engineers, is, is fantastic. More adaptive, more innovative. So my message is firstly, you know, I have famous five C's to share with. Okay, in your career and even in your personal life, you have to be very competent. First issue is, which will win you the battles, is the competence. And competence primarily comes out of your knowledge and through your experience. Second is the confidence. This is again something which you will, as you grow in age and in service and in your experience, you gain more and more confidence. Third is the courage. And I'm not talking of the physical courage alone, I'm talking of the moral courage, courage of conviction. You should be very, very passionate about your job. If you are passionate, half the job is done. You have to build your own story. Don't be a part of somebody else's story, okay? create your own story and that can only done, be done if you are courageous, you have taken some steps and if you are very passionate about your job. Uh, next is the communication skills. This is something the leaders of tomorrow, the managers of future have to learn the communication skills. You have to communicate with the people that you are working. When you sit under a roof with some people, it's not your experience, it's not your knowledge alone. So it's the collective wisdom. Okay, when you're when you're sitting in a, in a forum, when you're in an organization, don't feel alone and don't be alone. Share that wisdom and a collective wisdom of all will, will give you many dividends. It's a collective wisdom and I would say collaborative decision making. The present generations, other than being innovative, need to be very collaborative. So it'll be collaborative decision making. And the last one is that as far as accountability is concerned, is singular responsibility. There is no shared accountability. You must own up, okay? The ownership lies with you. You will be able to drive your projects. You will be able to drive your passions if you, if you own uh, the, the projects that have been given to you, any job given to you. 
इट्स दी ओनरशिप सो माई दीज आर माई सो कलेक्टिव विजडम कोलेबरेटिव डिसीजन मेकिंग सिंगुलर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी